No, it is not r slash subway time. That's insane. Obviously, like we already went through all the good posts that r slash subway had yesterday. Although, can I tell you something? After talking all that shit about yellow mustard yesterday, I went to Subway, got a sandwich, looked at the sauce deck. Bro, there's no yellow mustard anymore. And I thought maybe it was just like my local location. And then I went to, or someone tweeted me and said, hey, what are your thoughts on Subway no longer having a hot sauce? And I'm like, what the hell? They must, uh, I don't know, like the one thing that we talked about that Subway needs to do in order to get competitive again is adding more toppings and cooler toppings. Instead, they're like, mm, I don't know, it's been a couple bad years for business. We're going to cut mustard and hot sauce. Like what happened? It, they, it, I, I, it's hard not to be offended at their business practices. They cut mustard, but not in a good way, I might add. And then they added green goddess sauce. What the hell is green goddess? I don't even understand. Nothing in the... Because the sauce isn't even green. It's, uh, it's white with like green flecks in it. So I have no idea, based on the two words, what the sauce even tastes like. How am I supposed to know what it tastes like? I've had green goddess juice. It's usually like... Uh, you know, a bunch of kale and spinach and stuff mixed with like an apple and like some cayenne pepper or something like that. It's $12 for 300 milliliters. I actually have no idea what it is, to be honest. I'm searching what the hell is sub... Okay, what what is Subway Green Goddess Dressing? Yogurt base, parsley, tarragon, and chives, plus a tangy hint of lemon... Green Goddess is the perfect addition to the all-star sauce lineup on Subway Canada's menu. What the hell is going on? One of the top results from r slash Subway. Has anyone else gotten the Green Goddess sauce? We started on the 23rd. I just had it and it's delicious. A brief history of Green Goddess dressing. The idea was inspired by actor George Arliss, who started in a popular 1920s play named, you guessed it, The Green Goddess. Romer then conceived a recipe for salad dressing made of mayonnaise, chives, parsley, scallions, tarragon, and tarragon vinegar. Amazing. Incredible. I love the people who, like, normie post on r slash Subway. <clears throat> Just had it on a rotisserie-style chicken with avocado. Couldn't really taste the sauce much. The avocado drained out the taste. Kind of, sanest Redditor just dropped? The guy who's eating a Subway sandwich searches on Reddit for the name of the Subway sandwich and replies with his review. What sauce did I get? Well, I'm embarrassed to admit after all this shit I talked about smoky honey mustard, I got some smoky honey mustard because it was the only mustard that was available in the deck. So I was unable to have yellow mustard. Instead, I had to get the honey mustard with a little slice of a couple dabs of pink sauce. Yeah. And my sandwich artist was named Tony Pizza. And I said, oh, I'm so sandwich pilled right now. Mmm, I'm a little mustard cell. I know all the memes. So I'm just hydrate. I don't I don't want to brag or whatever. But I'm a little sweaty. Still I I mean I finished my 30 minute Samyo grunge ride um like 35 minutes ago, but I'm still I got to say the the internal body temperature is still a little high. Maybe it's because I had my best ride since pre-double food poisoning. Maybe we, uh, maybe we hit 352 output on a 30-minute ride. Maybe we were out of the damn saddle for like 13 minutes out of the entire 30 minutes. Maybe I was born in 1988, so it's impossible for me to, to not go as hard as possible when they put Alice in Chains' The Rooster on the track list. I mean, for, first three songs... Keep in mind, the average Peloton ride has the worst um, track list you could possibly imagine. Like a psycho playlist made by someone who's only ever heard music on the radio. And then you get this uh, ride. Track one, Jeremy, Pearl Jam. Track two, The Rooster, Alice in Chains. Track three, Tomorrow by Silverchair. I mean, that's that's like 12 minutes of high aerobic and anaerobic exercise. That's a great start to your day right there. You're making up names? What do you... Everyone knows... Uh, everyone knows those three songs if you were born probably like 1995 or earlier. Look, everybody's singing the songs, but they're singing different songs. Like, that's how you know all three of them are good. Although, I will say they... Um, 
they had a Stone Temple Pilots song on the on the ride, but it was like Big Country or whatever it's called. That's okay. Look, I'm I'm always more of a I mean, Interstate Love Song's okay, but what, what's the one that's like, when the dogs do find a got time, when he does the cool voice? When I feel in a f plush, that's the one. That's the one that gives me sour pleasing for sure. When he does the, he does the cool Axl Rose voices, he goes, when I feel, and then he goes, and I feel, he hits like both of the and I feels. You know what I mean? He's got like a, and then he's got like a, and, and I feel like I just got home. Look, if they, if they did a 30 minute grunge ride and they also, for some reason, put Madonna's ray of light on it. And they said, you know what? This is a 90 to 110, 35 to 50 resistance, steady state ride. I would say, you know what? I'm not going to say no to ray of light. I mean, that's a, that's probably my favorite Madonna song. As a 40 year old man from Olympia, Washington, this is relevant to my taste. I'm not going to lie. Okay. I'm not going to make the tweet because it's so, um, you know, it's so niche. But basically, whenever I saw someone who was like age 30 or below on the leaderboards for this grunge ride, I blew right by him. Whenever I saw someone and it was like uh, their name was like Olympia Olympian 50s from Washington, I was like, see you later, motherfucker. I know you're headed to the top. I can't tap into the same kind of animal instinct for the grunge that you can. If you grew up in the Pacific Northwest and you're like 56 years old right now, enjoy being at the top of the leaderboard. If they ever do a, you know, 45 minute Boards of Canada ride, I'll be right there at the top. It'll be me and some 17 year old Mew poster. Everybody else will give the ride a thumbs down because they'll be like, how am I supposed to keep my cadence when all the songs just go brrr, 30-minute Aphex Twin Selected Ambient Works Volume 2 ride. I can't wait, man. And then I got to, oh, you know what? Let me make sure before we get started, I, I, you know, I probably should have done this before, but I was getting my daughter ready for daycare. Um... And by that, I mean feeding her a granola bar while my wife did all the other work <laughs> involved in getting her ready for daycare. I mean, like, I look, I'm just... To, you got to play to your strengths, okay? My strength is not picking an outfit for my, like, almost two-year-old daughter. That's, that's my wife's area of expertise. It would take me too long, and she would not look as cute as she does when my wife picks, picks the outfit. I know that because when I pick the outfit, my wife goes, what the hell is she wearing? And I'm like, it was just the first two pieces of clothing that were in her drawer matched together. Also, I do have to say, pull-ups, no problem. Any other dads in the chat here? Um, if I have to change a diaper and it's pull-ups, it's no problem whatsoever. If I have to change a diaper and it's the one with the two, like, Velcro straps and the tabs, my wife can do it in, like, 40 seconds with one hand. It takes me, like, five minutes. Like, I do one side and then I try to pull the other side tight and like buckle it up. But then the first side that I did is loose. So I pull on the tab and I tighten it up. And then like, I'm like, oh, it's too tight. Then I try to loosen it. And then the thing is like almost down to her knees. So then I got to pull it back and she's rotating the whole time. Like I'm just, I'm, it's like the Austin Powers. Uh, I don't even know the golf cart parking. I don't know what vehicle you'd call that personal transport device. I'm a very much a wife guy. Last night, I, it took me two hours to put the baby to bed. She was going insane. I came downstairs. It was like 10.05 p.m. I like to go to bed at 10.30. Sink an island full of dishes. You know what I did? I sent my wife a message on Discord that said, am I on dish duty tonight? And then, an because I'm a millennial, I don't know if other generations will understand. I sent a grumpy looking picture of Michael Scott. And then I just did the dishes. And then like three dishes in, she was like, I can do those if you want. And I was like, ah, 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 ah. I've already gotten over the psychic hurdle of doing the dishes. Now I'm going to do them and I'm going to bank it. I'm putting this, this favor into the, into the chore bank. I'm not earning any interest on it, but I, I got it in the bank now. And I will probably just never redeem it. Which is fine. She already does more than me around the house to begin with. But, <laughs> but, it, but I 
in my head, I'm like, I got a surplus in the bank right now, which feels nice. Yeah, time to hold it over her for her entire life. Yeah, well, what about that time that I did the dishes? Anyway. All right, check this out. Last time we did React Court, we realized that every single post was horrible. Um, they were all creative writing exercises. And every single one is like, first paragraph, I'm the asshole. Second paragraph, oh my God, am I the asshole. Third paragraph, uh, horrible medical or psychological trauma that completely justifies the insane actions that they took in the first two paragraphs. And you, get, and you don't even feel good reading it because you're like, I feel bad and this is fake. So now I'm on the real am I the asshole subreddit. I'm not on the filtered one, which is like the best writing prompts that 11th graders made when they should have been doing their calculus homework. Unfortunately, calculus is no longer... Look, we're not going to get into that. We, we can talk about the education system later. Now we're on Am I the Asshole? And I'm sorting by asshole. Like top this week, only with the asshole flair. Because if you're not the asshole, I don't really care. I've realized... Also, I realized that the Am I the Asshole subreddit is designed badly. And I don't mean that to be rude, but it's not designed for what I want. Because when you sort by like top posts, the top posts are the people who are not the asshole because they get more upvotes because people are like sympathetic. The people who are the assholes get downvoted to oblivion because they're assholes. And as a result, they don't get sorted to the top. That's not what I want to see on this subreddit. The top posts are all like, am I the asshole for, uh, you know, my husband, 67M, and me, 19F, uh, he yelled at me at dinner and called me a racial slur. And then that's like 50,000 upvotes. You don't need that. I, don't, I know who the asshole is there. You can't get any kind of, you know, banter there. You need something like this. You need, I'm sorting by spicy. I don't like sorting by controversial, though, because, like, controversial, my limited experience with sorting by controversial on Reddit is that you just get the highly downvoted comments to the top, which usually ends up giving you, like, you know, horrible stuff. Like, people who are, like, just constantly talking about um, vaccine mandates downvoted to, like, minus 70, even though the post has nothing to do with vaccines in the first place. So, like, that's... I'd rather those comments stay near the bottom. <laughs> if possible. I love those people. That's fine. Me too, in, like, a human... We're all in this same boat together sort of way. Like, in a love your fellow man sort of way. Absolutely. Am I the asshole for making my daughter give up her dog? That's, that's a pretty spicy title. Throw away because a few of my family members browse Reddit and I would rather the situation stay contained. My M45 daughter, F16, has a dog she bought a couple months ago. Her mother and I said she could get one as long as she took care of him, paid for everything he needed, and spent time with him. Okay, like, this is already, like, I don't want to say is not okay. His, her, his daughter's a fighter pilot, a fighter jet. His daughter's a damn F-16 Hornet. I don't know if it's a Hornet. All I know is the SR-71 is the Blackbird. I feel like, and maybe this is like perfect world situation, okay? I feel like you can get like your eight year old or your 10 year old or your 12 year old a dog. When you're buying your 16 year old or you're allowing your 16 year old daughter to get a dog, that's your dog. There's a lot of upheaval in a young person's life from 16 to like 25. You're moving a lot, you might go to college, you might spend a year abroad, like, you, you, you might spend 10 years abroad. So, like, that's your pet. That's, you, this already is, like... that. I'm not saying the dad should have disallowed it. I'm simply saying he should at least recognize that, like, in forward-looking context, it's his dog. Which is fine, you know? If, isn't that the way it always works? Is a grumpy guy, maybe played by a Jack Nicholson type. I hate dogs. I hate dogs. Then all of a sudden he gets saddled with a dog. Maybe it's a dog of someone uh, played by maybe Greg Kinnear or something like that. And then he's like, oh, I'm so grumpy. I hate this animal. But then he bonds with the animal and he's like, actually, I love dogs. Like, is, that's the way it's supposed to go. Anyway, 
She held up her end of the bargain for a while. Everything was working out the way it was supposed to. She potty trained him, took him on plenty of walks, paid for his vet bills and food, the whole nine yards. Oh, that's the other thing. Dogs kind of expensive. I mean, pets are expensive in general. It seems unrealistic to ask your 16-year-old to pay for every expense for the dog. Like, not just apparently purchasing the dog in the first place, but then also the vet bills and, like, the food and the... Like, I, you could have, like, a part-time job just to pay for the dog, especially the vet. No wonder she doesn't have time for the dog. She's, got to, she's driving for Uber Eats, man. She works 20... Oh, there you go. Okay. However, after a couple of months, she got busier at school and work. She's a sophomore in high school and works part-time at a fast food chain. She works 25 to 30 hours a week and spends at least two hours on homework every night. Holy cow, man. I gotta be honest, this girl's busier than I am. That's like... <laughs> that's almost a full work week, plus school, plus two hours of homework a night. My God. I talked to her at first, telling her that he needed more attention. I like, I'm... The dad is 45. I get he's probably busy. He's a busy time in a person's life. I do love that he like he sees a, a sad dog and is like, well, there's absolutely nothing I could do to rectify the situation. 15-minute walk, play, play with the dog a little bit. No, it's not my dog. It's my house, my rules. We signed the contract. It's like my 16-year-old doesn't know anything about tort law. I've raised countless dogs in my life and I know what is needed for a healthy, obedient dog. I'm just unwilling to even put in the slightest effort for that right now. I was also worried she wouldn't be his alpha, which is absolutely necessary if she expected to take him with her when she moved out. I don't know what that means. Can somebody, can a, a dog pilled pet cell explain to me what your dog being someone's alpha is? It's a myth? Yeah, but like, what's the myth? <laughs> it's, it's an old-fashioned thing that i mean i know what an alpha dog is i've seen the movie with emile hirsch and justin timberlake and ben foster the dog needs to be seen as the pack leader but like how can he be the alpha to his owner like he's not pouring his own food into the bowl i i don't that's the other way oh he's worried the dog won't respect his daughter okay you know, I, not to be uh, the guy who saw James A. Case, uh, Acaster specials and then referenced them, but it reminds me of that James Acaster bit where he's like, I, I was at the club. Do you guys know what negging is? It's when you uh, subtly insult someone to undermine your self-esteem and get them interested in you. And I don't want to brag, but these girls were negging me all night. Plus two. Don't plus two me. You just watch the specials. They're, they're good. Things got better for a bit until the summer came and they were giving her more hours at work. Enough was enough and I put my foot down, insisting she give him up since she couldn't be bothered to make more time for him. She argued with me for a long time about it, eventually giving in and finding him a new owner. She goes straight to her room after work and refuses to talk to me. My wife is upset but hasn't really picked a side. So am I the asshole for making my daughter give her dog a new home? Edit, 30 hours of work a week is not that much, especially in the summer. I'm rich. She, look, she's 16 years old, man. Like, I mean, it's like yes and no. Like, 30 hours a week is not that much. But it's a lot for a sophomore in high school when probably, like, I don't know, 75% of her friends have, like, just th two or three months off for summer vacation. Like, that's pretty, that's pretty serious. I'm not going to pretend, like, there's, it, look, I had the easiest job in the world. Before we had the baby, you know, maybe like six, seven years ago, I could work 60 hours a week. I'm recording Isaac episodes, you know, it's not hard. I'm not going to act like 30 hours a week is not a lot, though, when you're slinging, like, hot chicken sandwiches out of the damn grill. And you're, when I was six, I, I didn't even get, uh, my first job until I was 17, I worked 10 hours a week. I had two shifts a week. Like, this is a... 30 hours is a lot, man. Even when, when I had summer jobs in university, I only worked 35 hours a week. I was like 19, 20. Not in 1920. I know you're going to think it was 1920 because I'm bald, but it, like I was 19 to 20 years old. But it, I, even still, that I, w I was like, you know, exhausted on Friday. Anyway... 
I'm raising my daughter to be a responsible adult. She pays for the things she wants and needs. And if she needs help with money, I provide it for her. It's the summer. She isn't in school. She has no excuse not to spend more time with him. Edit two. The dog was allowed in the house. I was saying it never went to the bathroom in the house. I did not abuse the dog and I do not neglect my daughter. I am teaching her to be a responsible adult. Okay. I believe that he believes that he's teaching his daughter to be a responsible adult. At the same time, I think he also... Well, I, I mean, just to be honest... I don't use this word lightly, and also I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist, but it seems like you traumatized your daughter by being like a hardline boomer about the idea that like she went back on her word very slightly for justifiable reasons because she got insanely busy as a 16-year-old kid, you know, who's in the damn 10th grade. This is a very common recurring element in... Uh, Am I the asshole? And I apologize. I don't want to be sexist, but it's to my own gender, so I can do it. <laughs> There's a lot of am I the asshole posts that are like 25 to 65-year-old men who are like, well, I, under I understand the situation changed in a way that's completely understandable and was not predictable in the first place, but we had a deal, and uh, the male code means that we shook on it, so we have like a rigid set of standards we've already agreed to, and if we don't adhere to it, I'm sorry, but you gotta give up your best friend. Like it's, th there's no, and, and it's not an all men thing, but like some people just in general have no ability to compromise or to realize that like a deal that you made in January might not make as much sense in August when, this, when the world has changed. But anyway, you're the asshole. You can't have it both ways. Making her take full responsibility for the dog, then forcing her to get rid of him. It's her dog or it's not. And from your own admission, it doesn't sound... I like this post because they used his own objectivism against him. If it's her dog, how can he make her give it up? You can't have your cake and eat it too. That's her dog from now on. You can't create like a state's rights situation and then also put a federal law on top of it when you don't like what the state does. It's intellectually inconsistent. The alpha stuff is also nonsense. Okay, that's chat told me that as well. She's going to resent you forever for this. Yeah, okay. Absolutely true. You're the asshole. A teenager who's in school full-time and working 25 to 30 hours a week part-time does not have the bandwidth to care for an animal. I, look, like, I'm just... Let's look at it mathematically. So school is, let's say, 8 to 2, 5 days a week. But also, I mean, it's not really 8 to 2, because you got to get up at 6.15 to take a shower to then uh, get on the bus. to, And then you get on the bus at the way on the way home, and it's another hour, and then you got two hours of homework a night. So she's probably, like, realistically... You know, she's on the clock from like seven until five. So it's 10 hours, it's just 50 hours a week of school, if you factor in the homework and the travel as well, plus 30 to 35 hours a week of work. I mean, she's at like, like a 75, 80 hour work week, man. That's, it's getting a little crazy. And I'm like running the numbers. What, there's 168 hours in a week or something like that? So half of that has already gone to school and work. A third of, of the total is gone due to sleep, realistically. And then you're like, well, well, she's only got like, what, eight minutes a week to take care of the, the damn dog? And she's 16 years old? It's madness, man. Okay, anyway, I think this one is just... I, I like starting with a cut and dry one like this. It makes it a little easier, you know? Usually we save the controversy for like, you know, 50 minutes in. I, I only want to see ones like 450 plus, okay? Am I the asshole for demanding my fiancé stop teaching our kids bad manners? Hi, everyone. Using a throwaway. Yeah, we know, okay? This subreddit has been around for like 10 years. It's not... Uh, you, Everybody expects you to use a throwaway at this point. Nobody expects you to tie it to your default identity, like in meat space. That's crazy. Lola has been teaching our kids bad table manners and sees nothing wrong with it. I hadn't noticed as they don't eat this type of food for lunch, dinner, or snacks, or eat it all the time, so I guess I missed it. Okay, so here's the... It's a good preamble. What constitutes bad table manners? I think there's a lot... Of, first off, your kids are two and a half, which is like... 
you got bigger fish to fry, I think. I think here's bad, bad table manners. Picking your nose at the table. Chewing with your mouth open or like making a lot of noise when you're, when you're chewing deliberately, basically. Some people get a little crazy and they're like, I, I honestly, I can't fathom how small the problems in your life would have to be to be worried about having your elbows on the table. But can I tell you, by the way, one of the reasons I never joined the school band in high school is like in ninth grade, I went on a, a one day like music retreat where we went to like a, a campsite uh, and played a concert at like a nursing home and a concert at the campsite. OK, we ate dinner at the campsite. I'm in the ninth grade. Everybody else, more or less, that's there was uh, they were already part of the school band. I'm eating. I'm enjoying the company of my friends. I have my elbows on the table. Everybody simultaneously breaks into like, I forget the, the way that it starts, but it's like something, Ryan, Ryan, if you're able, get your elbows off the table. This is not a, a livestock table. This is, it's a first class dining table. Walk your butt, walk, walk your butt, walk. And then the, I was like, what does that mean? And then they're like, oh, you have to get up in front of everybody and spell your name out with your ass. Like, you have to go to the front of the room and then spell your name, like, facing the opposite direction by moving your butt. And I was like, everybody was having a great time. And I was like, are you crazy? I'm not giving up nights and weekends for this shit. This is the most psychotic thing I've ever been a part of in my whole life. That's it. It was, it was like the, the start of midsummer, man. I was clearly in a different, like, a, a different culture, and I was fully immersed in it without having any sort of orientation whatsoever. Anyway, so that's why I never joined the band. One of the, one of the reasons. This morning, I was helping make Lola breakfast. I was helping Lola make breakfast. I watched instead, and she gave the kids tortillas that she ripped into pieces. They were using their bare hands to grab the food using pieces of the tortilla. I asked her what she was doing. We should be giving them utensils, but she seemed shocked that I was concerned and said that's how they always eat it. Yeah, I don't even want to stop reading because I don't understand what's wrong with it. How are you supposed to use a fork or like a spoon or a combination to use a tortilla? To gr I guess you could, but like why? Like could you cut a piece off the tortilla Use the knife to put some filling on top of it and then eat it? Yeah, but why? I, d I don't understand. I told her she was teaching them bad manners and making them think it was okay to just grab food with their hands. She told me they do that anyway when they have chips or grapes or tacos or pizza and listed a bunch of other snacks and fast food you eat without utensils. <laughs> okay, so my wife owned me. Am I the asshole? When I complained about something idiotic, my wife brought up 17 examples of foods we eat all the time that I don't have a problem with. But those, hey, those foods, though, are American. Like a burger, dude, a burger. You want me to use a fork and a knife to grab a burger? Are you crazy? It's a burger. A taco? Yeah, that's fork and knife, man. Tor you don't want to touch the tortilla with your bare hands. I pointed out those things are usually made to be eaten quickly or on the road, so utensils aren't needed. I, this is just an insane goalpost move to me. She said I was being offensive by calling her way of eating gross and saying it was bad manners, but I do think it's gross to see someone grabbing at food with their bare hands like that. On the other hand, uh, eating a hamburger while driving, even though you're still touching the food with your hands, not gross even though you probably haven't washed your, your hands in uh, two hours, no big deal. It's only gross when you do it at home right after you've washed your hands in your bathroom sink. She said she grew up eating like that and would always use tortillas to eat things like eggs or meat bean, meat rice beans and that it wasn't gross because she always made the kids wash their hands. I ended up giving my kids forks for them to eat. Okay, healthiest relationship spotted. They didn't want to use, which made me even more frustrated with her because now they're used to this. Lola has been really annoyed the rest of the day and wouldn't let me help with lunch, and earlier she was walking around the house speaking to someone, probably her sister, in Spanish about me, and I'm starting to feel a bit annoyed. It's so good, man. He doesn't speak Spanish!
Because then he would probably know who she's talking to. But she's talking about him. You, I can relate to that. Usually it's not uh, bad stuff. But sometimes I'll be like, you know, looking at my phone while I'm eating dinner with my in-laws. Because, I mean, like I'm on year 10 of this stuff, right? Like some point you just got to tap out and, and do the doom scroll. And I'll hear like Korean speaking and then Ryan and then Korean speaking and then Ryan. And then I'm like... But that, I know it, I can pick up enough Korean that I can usually figure out what she's talking about. And then I like I laugh when the punchline comes in, at least. I don't pretend to know the whole thing, but I, I'm like, I get the gist of it. Wow, lots of replies quickly. They seem to be mixed so far, but I will add the kids can use utensils and use them on foods like soups, pastas, etc. What is it? It's not like even that the kids are young, so they have to use their hands. I mean, I have a, a two-year-old, essentially. She's not quite two, but she's close enough. She uses her hands to eat pasta sometimes because she's young. But at the same time, I recognize that ideally in the future, she'll use a fork or a spoon. You know, she'll use appropriate utensils just so her hands and face don't get so messy. The, this is a food that's designed for hand-based consumption like the only thing you gain out of using a fork and a knife or a spoon to do it is that you got more dishes and it's probably going to take you longer to eat like it's just it's just bad it's not a sensible uh opinion to have yeah you know this is a good point the tortilla is the utensil is basically like a it's a corn glove. Well, maybe that's not the... Maybe glove is not the way you think of it, but... All the dude's replies are super racist, by the way. Okay, well, let's go take a look at that then. Um, so, yeah, you're the asshole. I think he's just mad, and he's trying to find a source for his madness, but actually, he's just mad. <laughs> I think he has some built-up resentment, and it bubbled to the surface at the, the most frictionless possible moment which was this where he felt like he had a leg to stand on but actually doesn't also like I, there's like a simple rule of parenting i think if you got like a good routine with your kids or if one if your spouse has a good routine with the kids why fuck it up like it's already i'm not saying it's the hardest job in the world but it's like it's hard enough probably took like months to get to the point you got a stable eating routine and you're like hey let me let me get in here and uh cause some problems for no reason show his replies i don't want to validate him also i don't know how to do that that's the main reason you're the asshole your casual racism towards your wife is going to affect your kids yeah okay, i mean okay i'm i understand why everybody's calling him a, a little racist however i wish more people would also focus on the fact that his argument just doesn't make sense to begin with I understand why the racism thing is is bubbling into the surface, but I wish more people would talk about how it doesn't make sense to eat a tortilla with a with a fork and a knife to begin with. Am I the asshole for telling my girlfriend to stop meal planning? Oh no, the, it's an edit at the top, man. This the the whole post is just edits. There's an edit at the top. There's. Three edits at the bottom, and the whole thing is only two paragraphs. No, this is a new one. This is this. I swear to you, this is a new one. It's posted two days ago. We had we did have one similar, but that was I believe that was the boyfriend was mad because it took five minutes to plan their meals for the week. But he's not the kind of person on a Sunday who knows what he wants to eat on a Thursday because mommy's special little boy gets to pick at 545 what he's going to eat at six every day of the week, even though he's 28 years old. I remember that one. That one still lives in my brain. That's like somehow you got to be an adult, but you're like, my day is ruined if I don't get to choose what to eat for dinner on the exact like time of dinner every day. Oh, man. Sorry, I had to let the blood pressure come down a little bit. Whew. What about the classic, I let my stepson almost die so that he could learn his lesson? Yes, the most sensible um, home, gym, home gym owner who let his uh, stepson think that he was going to die because he didn't want his stepson using his gym. 
See, that's what could happen to you if you use the gym without my supervision. That's also what could happen to you if you use the gym with my supervision as demonstrated by my behavior right now. The other one, do there, there's been a lot of classics like uh, the, the, I borrowed three daughter or three daughters, three dollars from my sister to order pizza and then paid her back before she got home and she won't talk to me anymore. And I'm like, it's three dollars or they paid it back. But then the, the, some people were like, it's the principal. That's my property. Anyway, all right, am I the asshole for telling my girlfriend to stop meal planning? We'll start with the edit. Edit, please stop commenting that my girlfriend has an eating disorder. She does not. If you do it, I will probably block you, but I'm not 100% confident. It depends on the contents of your message. My dumb assery sent her to a high-intensity practice with no food in her body. I don't know what is going on. Is written like a, a Johnny Truant passage from House of Leaves? Like, what's happening? I, we're starting at the damn end. She is not rigid with her food. She doesn't have time to cook, so meal prepping makes sure she can't eat to meet her caloric goals and nutritional needs to stay healthy. Her team meets with a dietitian to make sure they're eating the calories they need to. Well, then why are you telling her to stop meal prepping? I don't understand. She needs to meal prep to get her nutritional needs, but the title is, am I the asshole for getting her to stop meal prepping? She also goes to the gym six days a week. Because of this, she likes to meal prep <laughs> for the week to make sure she gets her macros. I don't know if you've heard about this stuff. Just a couple hours ago, she went into the fridge and suddenly became very frantic because I'd eaten her overnight oats. I think that's what they are called. I didn't realize they were part of her meal prep. I thought the oatmeal fairy just blessed us and put some food in the fridge that was for me to eat without asking for it. I thought just some benevolent donator came by and put some food in the fridge that was for me because I live here. So blessed. Le LeBron James uh, Instagram photo. Can't believe this my life. I didn't realize they were a part of her meal prep because she never made them before and didn't say anything. What was she thinking? Usually her meal preps are several of the same meal, but there was only one oatmeal container, so I thought it wasn't hers. But like, okay, I think I'm missing some context. Whose was it that, do you have like roommates? If it's not hers, then whose would it be if you didn't make it? Like you didn't make it, so it's not yours either. I don't understand. Can you just admit, like what, instead of, writing this insane sentence that falls apart under the slightest bit of scrutiny. Why not just be like, I'm an adult, I made a mistake and ate her food because it looked good and it was a moment of weakness or whatever. I don't understand why you, like, like trying to come up with some form of justification that's like, oh, normally when she makes food, there's a lot of it, but there wasn't that much here. So I just ate it even though I didn't make it. It doesn't, it just doesn't make any sense. I'm trying to put myself in this guy's, in this guy's shoes. Like it's not ingredients, it's food. It's not like there was some strawberries in the fridge and he ate a couple. Like this is like a meal. You ate a meal out of the fridge. This is the guy that is in your office. So they had to make those bags that have like a mold pattern on them. So that it looks like it's a moldy sandwich, but actually the sandwich inside is good. You just had to put some form of deterrence on it so that people didn't steal it from you. Maybe he thought he made it and forgot. Maybe that, that's the only thing. I, may, hey, did I make these overnight oats? I don't know. Maybe. It doesn't seem like a thing that my fiance would do or my girlfriend. So yeah, it was probably me. Even though I have no memory of doing it, that just doesn't seem like something she would do. She went off about how inconsiderate I was being because she didn't have time to cook in the morning because of her schedule. That seems completely fair. I immediately apologize for eating it, even though clearly based on this post, he doesn't really see that he, that he did that much wrong. I mean, you think he knows that he did it wrong, but he's like, hey, there's justification for it. Have you considered that the container was not as big as the normal meal prep containers you make, and thus I didn't think it was for you? I thought it was for anybody. It was a first-come, first-serve situation. I know that it was super crappy, and I genuinely had no idea. I just want to, I just want to talk to him for a second and be like, what do you mean you had no idea? It, how did you think the food got in the fridge? 
I'm st- it, much like the last. This is the last post, but like on steroids. Where I'm like, I didn't understand why that guy wanted to use a fork to eat a tortilla. This one, I'm like, I just don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. After apologizing, I said maybe she should stop meal prepping if not getting one of her meals throws her off that much. This is, I'm sorry to say, this is rude. This is some of the dumbest shit I've ever read in my life. Can you apply this to anything? Oh, if you need insulin so bad, maybe you should stop taking it. What well, doesn't make any sense. Maybe you should stop meal prepping if uh, me stealing your food makes it so you can't eat your meal. She got angry and said that I wouldn't understand since I don't play a sport. Here's the thing. I don't think it has anything to do with a sport, but I do think that she's right that he wouldn't understand based on the reasoning skills that were on display throughout the rest of the post. Then she left. She usually usually texts me when she gets to her location safely, but hasn't said anything since our argument. Am I the asshole? She just texted me. She wants to talk after practice. She just got home from practice and we talked. She apologized at snapping at me over an accident, but like it's like she's not in the wrong like at all. You should always try to be nice to people, but like but she didn't she didn't do anything wrong. It's not an accident. I mean, I'm not naive enough to think that, like, you could never eat someone's food that they wanted to eat, you know? But then to, like, be offended that you got called out and thus go, maybe you should stop meal prepping if you need food so bad. Like, she, he should apologize. She just got pissed in the heat of the moment, but asked me not to touch any of her meal prep food without asking, especially before practice, because her foods are important to keeping her physically fit and her energy high. Yeah, no shit. Why is he typing this? Like, everybody reading this has to know this, right? She said that not keeping to her nutritional goals can cause potential injuries. She said if I want the food she preps, I need to ask her to make some, make me some while she's prepping on Sundays. I feel like I should include this in my post because many people don't read all the comments. Yes, I apologize profusely. I ordered pink lidded containers on Amazon to make sure this doesn't happen again. You just, it doesn't, are you, what are you talking about? You don't need a new system. If you didn't make the food, you know is not for you to eat without asking at least. Like, What's wrong? You know, the system didn't fail you. You just ate someone else's food. I don't understand what... Why is this a debate? I'm not even... Look, the, you, I, I get why you're focusing on the, the pink stuff, okay? I'm just saying, like, it, much like the last one, I'm like, uh, the, the central problem here is so insane to me that I just don't get it. If you didn't make the food... You don't need a special container. Can't you look into your memory and be like, did I make this paella? If you didn't make the paella, then don't eat the paella. Also, the man's eating like overnight oats at night. They're called overnight oats. And that's only like a minor slice of the problem. But anyway, we're both laughing over it now. She started calling me the oatmeal bandit. I love her. She's so crazy. You're insane. This is the most insane post I've ever read on, on Am I the Asshole. You, you stole her food, tried to gaslight the internet into thinking that there was any plausible reason to do it. It doesn't, it, it, I don't think it makes you a bad person necessarily. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. He must be so hot. <laughs> of course you're the asshole. You knew for sure you hadn't prepared it and it wasn't yours. Instead of saying, my bad... Your solution is to tell her to stop meal prepping. What? Just don't eat things you didn't cook. Holy cow. It's like literally what I took 3,000 words to say in like 50 words. Then they go too far and they say other things about how we would steal stuff from the work fridge. I'm not comfortable saying that again, but you're the asshole. I thought it wasn't hers. Did you make it? Then whose did you think it was if not hers? It's so good. You're the asshole. Did you think the oat fairy prepped the overnight oats? Okay, I'm learning I'm not as clever as I thought I was. 
Every, I, I'm glad that for once everybody is like baffled by the fact that this guy is trying to argue like he didn't know it was hers, so he thought it was his. Info, how is the solution for this to stop meal prepping and not for you to just ask before you eat something? Usually info is like, how old is the poster? This one is, this, the info is an own. You're the asshole. You knew it wasn't yours. I'd say the reasonable next step is to ask her to label her meals, but asking her to stop entirely? Why? I don't, I mean, labeling the meals, I think, is even too far, but like, like, they're implicitly labeled because he didn't make them. I don't understand. I just don't get it. <laughs> the label is you didn't make that shit. There was only one oatmeal. I, I, I will read 25 of these. There's one oatmeal container, so I thought it wasn't hers. What the fuck? You knew it wasn't yours. You're the asshole. Maybe a ghost left it there. I love this, man. Usually her meal preps are several of the same meal, but there was only one container, so I thought it wasn't hers. Um, whose food did you think you ate and left without a meal instead, and why would that have been okay? Oh, man. That's, that's fun. I'm not saying bullying is fun, but I'm not bullying. I'm simply asking this person questions to figure out how stupid they are. <laughs> I'm simply using the Socratic method to, to figure out how stupid they are. I don't even... I, I love the mother-in-law post. The, the start of this is unparsable. It's incomprehensible. Am I the asshole for giving my mother-in-law a gift with strings attached and then refusing to let her to pay me back? He's been a huge asshole to me. He makes fun of my husband and I constantly. He's videotaped us fighting and shown people... And he at one point had a group chat where he was telling his friends about our issues. He claims he can't help himself because it is so funny and he is addicted. At this point, I don't even want to be around the man. He smirks when we speak and I couldn't stand the thought of my gift going to him anyway. Holy cow. It's so funny. Oh, whoa, 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 dude, look at this. Info. This you? Oh, damn, nice work. Mother-in-law troll. Good job collecting so many of the mother-in-law troll posts. I don't even want to read Am I the Asshole because they're almost always made up. Yo, get audited, dude. Well, anyway, I'm glad we wasted a bunch of our time on that fake creative writing prompt. But hey, even here's the thing. Just because it's fiction... I still feel like you can get something out of it. I mean, I only read nonfiction books and watch documentaries because there's just so much beauty in the real world that I'm curious about. But after that happened, I'm like, you know what? I realized the value of fiction because we still discuss things that are relevant to the real world, even if this unique situation didn't actually happen in vivo. Am I the asshole for not following the school supply standards for my children? Okay. Let's see. We got 20 minutes left. Probably. Automatic, yes. I don't even know the, the premise. What, what are the school supply standards? Like, they were only supposed to get their kid, like, pens and pencils, and then their kid shows up with an iPad or something. They got the number one pencils. That, but the Scantron won't, won't be able to read it, man, if they use a number one pencil. How are the standardized tests for the kindergartners supposed to get uh, graded if the Scantron can't figure it out? Hold on, our screen region's a little bit messed up here. We always allow independence and choices as long as it doesn't become inconvenient. For example, if my kid picks out the 120 count crayons, we might redirect him to the 96 count instead since it's easier to carry around in his backpack. Your five-year-old doesn't need 96 crayons, man. That's too much. That's ridiculous. He like 16 crayons at most. That covers like, like the rainbow and all the semitones. You know, you got the whole thing. Anyway, other than practicality, we don't try to persuade them in any way. This is not smart. Like, I, I'm re I understand what the dad is. He, the dad, if you're not a parent, the dad is hitting you with some subtext early. He's hitting you with a signal, and the signaling is he's Montessori-pilled, which is fine, but he lets his kids do whatever they want. 
And if they suggest something really dumb, he's like, no, what if we do the second dumbest thing instead? I'm not saying you should be like, no, you get four crayons. Like, that's it. I'm just saying, you know, I think you, you could provide a little bit more guidance than that. that but that's a, there's a large difference in philosophy there. I, can I say something else that's a value judgment? I think it's, it's just a little, and it's not a, a big problem. He's devoted a lot of text to how much he loves shopping for school supplies that just seems like a little bit like more than I would expect for an adult. Doesn't have to be a chore, but like the fact that he's getting so much enjoyment out of it. Because you know what, and I'm going back in time now. I show up to school with the Buffalo pencil case. I got like the little pencil sharpener. I got, uh, you know, some lined paper. And I got the, the, the binders where you have to go, Kung! and then the fucking rings snap open. And obviously, if you, if you pinch your finger when you close the ring, you're going to lose it. But they open with so much force that just the ring popping open can actually draw blood if your hand is in the wrong spot. And then you look to the person next to you, and it's probably uh, somebody named Elizabeth who is, uh, you know, six inches taller than you in the seventh grade, and she's got a five-star binder for every single school subject, even though you're in middle school, and then she's got her pencils, like, this is the number two pencil, this is my pen, this is my gel pen, this is my... And I'm like, this is, this is that kid growing up, who I've got to ask for a pencil because I forgot to bring one, and then they go, just make sure I, you give it back. I'm going to give it back. I'm not out here in the, in the habit of stealing pencils from my classmates. Like, I don't, I don't get any value out of that. We usually grab quite a few items on the teacher's wish list as well and make a point to wrap it up nicely as a little thank you present from our children to the educator that will be spending the year with them. This year, upon receiving the school supplies list, there is a note made at the top that all supplies should be exactly as listed on the, sh on the sheet, such as a 24-pack of crayons. Excuse me, what are, is, is this a Lasco cave painting? How am I supposed to weave a fresco with a mere 24 crayons? It doesn't seem possible. But 96 crayons for a five-year-old is actually so funny, too. Have you ever seen a five-year-old draw? Like, they could accomplish the same thing with two crayons. I had 96 at five, STFU. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's exhausting. Hello, Cobalt, by the way. Hello, Cobalt. Cobalt, how many crayons do you think is too many for a five-year-old to go to kindergarten with? Would you say the number is over or under 96? <laughs> if you had to pick a number out of thin air, an adequate amount of crayons for a five-year-old to take to school without being, you know, ridiculous... Would your number be over or under 120? This was confusing for me, as I buy the items specifically for my children. I decided I was going through with our supply shopping tradition as normal, never getting anything less than what was required, of course, and send a note with both of my boys that their items would be their own and could be kept in their backpacks as usual. When I expressed this sentiment to those around me, aside from my husband, they weren't very receptive to the idea. Am I the asshole for not following the rules listed? It's just, why are you getting in your own way, I guess? It's just kind of weird. I agree. Was, I'm straddling two lines here because I'm a parent, but I've also been a teacher. And when you're like a teacher, if you have to manage a class of 35-year-olds, I'm sure you devise the system that makes it as convenient as possible so you don't have to focus on minutia, like who's got the, oh, is the right crayon box in their backpack? You probably just want to keep it on the damn shelf so when it's arts and crafts time, you can just, you know, drag them all out and nobody's going to cry because they didn't get the right box, right? But instead, you got one dad who's like, I know that you designed this system, but I think I know how it should work better than that. And now is even more exhausting because you got to deal with the dad as well. So, yeah, I think you're kind of the asshole, honestly. Like, why don't you just buy the list? Like, the teacher's job is already hard. You really think that they designed the school supply lists to like antagonize you you think they don't have bigger problems in their lives it's just a it's kind of just like a a weird battle to pick quite frankly
You got pre-read? Okay, well, let's check it out. I'm 100% open and now intend to buy extra school supplies. The same with each of my children for those whose families can't afford to purchase them. My kiddos also... Yeah, okay, so like I understand also that maybe there was like a, 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 a cap on the school supplies to not make uh, people with less money feel like they have to overspend in order to keep up with the Joneses. That makes a lot of sense, but also like why are you... I don't just I just don't understand why you're picking the battle in the first place. Like why don't you just adhere to the the letter that they gave you cuz it's kindergarten. Like who cares? <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like why like do you have no problems in your life? I get that this is four petty grievances, but at the same time like how did here's what I want. I want you to make a follow up post. It's like how I got to be 35 years old with two kids. And the biggest thing going on in my life right now is like I'm having a feud with a kindergarten teacher over school supplies. You haven't had simultaneous salmonella and campylobacter infections recently. Clearly, you haven't done colonoscopy prep recently. Am I the asshole for um, helping my wife take her father to the emergency room and then rolling my eyes when he told me that they said wait anywhere so he went home and missed his appointment? You know, like I, I feel like I got, I'm just wondering what's going on in your life that this is taking up so much space. You're the asshole for the reasons others have mentioned. 14 years in public schools, you don't want to start the year being that parent, you just don't. Most classrooms I was in, extra items were simply sent home or not used. May I suggest you could set up a homework, a homework station at home with some of the off-list items your kiddos would like? I know who this parent is. Not really. Like, I don't know who they are. But I, every class had three of this person. You know, the kind of, like, kid that's unreasonably organized for a 12-year-old. I didn't realize that that carried through into adulthood as well. It was me. I was, I was unreasonably messy as a 12-year-old. Or, I don't know, maybe reasonably messy, honestly. The OMG, he does. I've been loving the daddy pig photoshops, by the way. There, finally, I'm, I'm, it's a number two post, so maybe it's not finally. From a teacher, you're the asshole. Especially if items are going to be shared. You're trying to individualize supplies for your kids. It makes it harder on the teacher when they have 25 plus more kids like yours to manage in the classroom. Shared supplies also create a sense of accountability. What you're doing is teaching your kids it's okay to not follow directions. Following directions is one of the biggest problems with kids in school right now. Yes, good. Like here, it's the thing, it, and I, apologies, I already talked about the campylobacter, the colonoscopy. Let's bring it back to the cruise. It's the same thing except with adults that we went through when we were disembarking from the damn cruise ship. There's 3,500 people trying to get off of this damn, you know, floating apartment building. One in 10 people was like, I know that they've designed the system to maximize throughput, but I'm just going to fuck around and break the rules because I think I know better than the staff. And that makes it take longer, not only for them, but for absolutely everybody that is behind them in the line as well. Hey, we only called people with Pluto luggage tags. Oh, I'd like to get off the boat. What's your luggage tag? Uh, Mickey Mouse? Uh, well, we only called Pluto. I don't understand why I can't get off the boat. It's because they got the, the luggage is coming off in a specific order, so they let the people go, and then they can pick up their luggage, and then they got more space with the luggage, which will let, then they can put out the new tags, and then every, like, it's actually faster for everybody to just follow the system. But instead, this guy's like, oh, the system's not perfect for me. Yeah, that's because it's a compromise, because you got 30 kids in your damn kindergarten classroom. You got to... You know how exhausted you are after looking after like two kids all day? Okay, look after 25 strangers' kids in a big room where they're all running around with each other for eight hours for nine months a year. And then, oh, it's Tuesday, time to do finger painting. Try to get 25 damn kids to wash their hands. Oh, uh, Jeremy's dad sends him with the special Toms of Maine soap because he doesn't use dial. They're not a dial household. Okay, like... Honestly, you have to live with other people in society. Just get over it. Like, you're not that special. <laughs> Sorry to say. You're not that cool. Like, everybody's got to wipe their ass with the one-ply toilet paper for 15 years, okay? It's a shared trauma that allows us to bond as generations. What the hell is this? Am I the asshole for not wanting a med school student to watch my doctor perform a rectoscope on me? Can somebody tell me, is a rectoscope a real thing? Or is this a rare colonoscopy post? It's, it's, my, it's my, uh, my alt account. By user slash deleted five days ago. Five days ago? Ah, I'm safe. No, I'm not. My colonoscopy was six days ago. Oh, shit. 
I had opportunity. What do I need now? I need motive and intent. Holy cow, this is like, it's perfect timing, man. Long story short, my doctor told me, I don't live in the US. I don't live in the US, man. Hmm, I don't remember making this post, but this doesn't seem like the kind of post my wife would make. So it must be for me. Long story short, my doctor told me 29M. Uh, I'm 29M in many ways. That she will perform a rectoscope to see if I really have hemorrhoids or something else. It was already embarrassing to discuss my medical issue in front of a bunch of medical students and ask questions too. I pro Look, it's your prerogative. It's your right. I, I promise you that they do not care. Every single one of these students is going to watch like 12 people die in their career. They, they don't care about your butthole. They're probably just really tired. Like, <laughs> they're, just, they're probably just like, man, I hope this guy stops being so weird about his asshole so we can get lunch on time today. So I don't have to eat a ham sandwich over the bathroom garbage can on the way to my next assignment. She got me into the exam room and with her, there was a student, medical training with her. My doctor told me to get in the position, get my pants off and literally show her my asshole to insert the thing. I was like in front of her and she said, yes. It threw me off because I never expected this to happen. I told her I'm not going to do this until she gets out of the room. The student told me she's just here to observe and ask questions so she learns. I told her that it's cute. What? Nice try, sweetheart. I know you're just trying to get a glance at this sweet, juicy peach I got here. Cute excuse, honey. Where I come from, we call this sexual harassment. What is he talking about? That's cute. But I'm not going to do it in front of her. She needs to get out. I got in a small fight with the doctor and the student, both insisting it's okay for her to be there and trying to convince me. But eventually the doctor gave up and agreed. After finishing my visit, the student confronted me and made me know she didn't like the way I spoke to her. That seems totally fair. <laughs> if you said it's cute. There's, I, spoke, oh, I spoke to her and that there's no shame in medicine. She's only there for learning. I told her off and that I don't want her to see me naked. She called me an asshole and left. Am I the asshole? Okay, this might surprise you. I don't think you're the asshole for not wanting the medical student to be in there. I think that's your right as a patient. I, and you probably could guess this based on the amount that I talked about this, but like, I'm open about my medical procedure. I mean, if, if they want to have the room packed for the colonoscopy, what do I care? Six people are seeing a camera be shoved up my asshole why not make it 20? Why not make it 100? What do I care? But I think it's your right to be like, no, only the doctor. But the way he talked about it was like, I was, was very rude. I think that makes him an asshole. Edit. I want to say that I went to a medical school hospital, not a normal hospital. This might be relevant. Okay, you're the asshole. Are you stupid? <laughs> Are you, is this the same guy who made the, he ate his girlfriend's overnight oats? Because he thought she didn't make them and thus he must have? Yeah, that's, that's dumb. If you go to like a barber college, you can't be mad that like a student might want to watch you get your hair cut. It doesn't make any sense. Like it's actually, it is nonsensical. I retract my not the asshole. Again, oh, here's the thing. I think you should have the right to be like, no, the medical student can't watch you shove a camera up my butt. I'm not comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with that because at that point I'm like, I got bigger problems, like the camera going up my butt. I'm not going to let like a, a little speed bump screw up the whole road trip, right? If you, and you know what? Maybe they'll become a better gastroenterologist as a result. But the way he talked to the medical student seemed very rude, which makes him an asshole. I'm finding it hard to believe that a doctor wouldn't ask and that any medical staff wouldn't take obvious patient discomfort into a factor. And to, so this is what's called the straw man argument. They've chosen uh, the weakest argument of someone that disagrees with them, and then they're going to argue against it in order to make their own point seem stronger. I'm so sorry you found that unbelievable, but I, unfortunately, I can assure you it did happen to me yesterday, and it was unbelievable to me too. I thought I was the asshole because maybe I prevented her a chance to learn. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, I find it hard to believe as well. But simultaneously, like, I also find it hard to believe that you went to a medical university hospital and then we're like, no medical students, please. Update, thank you for the kind words. I know that this post is tagged as asshole, but it seems most comments are saying not the asshole, so don't worry. I know now that <laughs> we won, we won big. Jay Beesman, 
Thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you, thank you. It's looking like I'm not the asshole. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not the asshole. I'm also going to tell you I only went to the hospital because my doctor works there now and told me to go there for a checkup every Thursday. Once a week? I also live in Egypt. Sorry for not answering these questions early. I didn't open my account until now. I will also try to report the student for... I, I, I lost my place. I will also try to report the student like many people here are telling me to. It will be a disaster if somebody like this becomes a doctor. What the hell are you talking about? You kind of like, based on your own verbiage in the post you kind of verbally abused her which means you in real life you were probably way more rude than even your post would make you seem to be and she didn't say hey i really want to see your butthole she said hey i didn't like the way you talked to me which is completely valid literally they're just i mean <laughs> i'm sorry they're just looking at your butt why are you being so weird doesn't make you any less of a man again I think he's within his rights to say i only want the doctor to be in the room i just don't know why he's making it such a big deal that like he was a, he was being a kind of a dickhead about it, and then the student was like, "You're being a dickhead," and then he's like, "I'm I'm about to ruin this girl's whole career." Also, the post says asshole, but he's like, "Thank you for telling me I'm not the asshole." Uh, you're the asshole because of your edit. Everybody sucks here, in light of the edit, not the asshole. Okay, well I'm not gonna read this because it makes my point weaker. Med student here, not the asshole, traitor. Not. The asshole. Edit. Everybody sucks here. Edit. Not the asshole. I don't respect a flip-flopper. All right. Anyway. <laughs> Ever tell you this story about how on like one of the last days of uh, my undergrad, my first year in undergrad, the commissary was selling a product called Coca-Cola Black, which was a, a little experiment the coca-cola corporation did in north america i know that coke and coffee is still around like in australia or whatever coca-cola black was was coca-cola with a little coffee flavoring it was so unpopular at least locally that when it came time for the the school year to end the commissary was selling it in a deal i've never seen before buy one get 11 free you could get a, a 12 pack of coca-cola black for the price of a single bottle you know I went in. And honestly, by the end of that 12-pack, I was like, this is not that bad. It's actually, it's kind of refreshing. I mean, if you offer me, like, buy one, get 11 free, I'm taking that on, on any product that's essentially edible. <laughs> that's a dad deal for sure. Ever tried G Fuel? I had a, a sample cup of G Fuel at a convention once. I mean, I... I'm, I might be costing myself potential sponsorships in the future. We've actually had, like, sponsorship offers from, like, gamer fuel companies. Not just uh, G Fuel, but there's a lot of other ones. I don't necessarily feel uncomfortable drinking it myself, but I feel uncomfortable promoting it to my audience just because I feel like some of the claims about, like, enhanced intellectual performance are quite sp spurious and based on pseudoscience at best. Like, I don't think they actually... I don't think it makes any sense to suggest that they offer performance enhancing capabilities. It's just it's, like it's just sugar and like some vitamins and some flavoring, which is fine. But again, I I don't feel comfortable being like, oh, I'm, you know, uh, uh, I don't feel like that game went well. Let me have some G Fuel real quick. NL after the sponsorship. Guys, exclamation point. Gamer juice in the chat. You might have more Fall Guys wins if you drank some G Fuel. Dude, forget that. All I need is a Smurf account. You know what? I should just download that shit on the Switch. <laughs> I bet I'd get, like, two good games on the Switch, and then the ELO... Oh, that's not even the jump. What am I thinking? Then it would adjust, and I would have to then download it for the PS5, and so on and so forth. I did... I had some Road Rage yesterday, but all of my Road Rage is passive-aggressive. Like, I don't actually confront people. I just yell at them inside of my car and like give them the middle finger sometimes. Let me tell you, okay, so I was at a four-way stop. It's very busy, it's rush hour. I'm at a four-way stop. There's cyclists, there's pedestrians. It's full. I'm the fourth person to come to the, the four-way stop. The first person to go is on my right. They're turning left, which means they're gonna cross in front of me. So they have to go before me. They don't get to go for a while. 
because they have uh, like pedestrians are crossing, you know, it makes sense. So some other cars jump the queue. Completely understandable. You don't have to wait. That if you're not familiar with the with the four way stop, you go in the order that you arrived at the four way stop. However, if the person who would go next can't go because their way is blocked, if your way is not blocked, and you were the first person to arrive at the stop that their way is not blocked, you can skip the queue. So anyway, a couple people skip the queue. Then some bozos show up at the four way stop. And they don't know who got there first. All they know is, uh, 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 I got here now and I want to go. So the, the car that had the right of way finally went, I'm next, okay? I'm turning left. I go to enter the, the intersection and turn left. Lady on my left going straight in a BMW SUV starts pulling out in the intersection. I said, you know what? Fucking kill me. I pulled out to indicate I am not stopping. And then I made my left turn in front of her car because that's how traffic works. And the whole time I was making the left turn, which it, it looks like I'm turning to the right because I guess my camera's mirrored. But the whole time I was making the left turn, I was going, Oh, so how many times do you want me? How many cars am I supposed to wait for to get to the intersection when it's my turn? With my window completely closed. So she couldn't hear me. But I could see her on the steering wheel and she looked rattled. And I was like, mission accomplished. It's not because I wanted to make someone feel bad. It's because you got to learn how the damn rules of the road work so that everybody can get where they need to go safely and as efficiently as possible. Was the baby in the car? No, she was in the car on the way home. Where usually I say something like, yeah, that's no problem. Just run the red driving as slow as fucking possible so that I can't actually make my left turn that I've been waiting for for a minute and a half. Yeah, no, no problem. Just incredibly slowly run the red light. Shit drives me crazy, man. Which is why I made that tweet that said, I'm not stopping at stop signs anymore. I'm just treating them as a green light. I don't know. Would love your thoughts on this. Are you hoping for lip readers? No, I, I don't care if like the driver hears what I'm saying. I just want them to know that they fucked up. She doesn't need to... Because what I'm saying was like essentially incomprehensible. Like I, As I was saying it, I was like, this doesn't make any sense. How many times do you want me to wait for people when it's my turn? Like, it's just... What she's imagining in her head was like 10 times worse than what I was actually saying. What if they pull out a gun? Well, then I would drive away as fast as possible, for sure. She was probably exhausted. Okay, sorry. Uh, I forgot. Uh, the people that you're cutting off in traffic aren't tired. Everybody that you're cutting off in traffic is well rested. Only, only the person doing bad things is allowed to have something going on in their life. It's like the, the Fall Guys thing. Anybody you beat is a child. Anybody you lose to is also a child. <laughs> I will say, and the other thing is, I actually, like, I'm not a perfect driver. I cut somebody off in traffic this weekend. I can't, I, just, I think it was on Sunday. I cut someone off. I'll, I'll tell you how it happened. I looked in the mirror to see if it was open for me to change lanes. Uh, it was. I signaled. I shoulder checked. There was nobody there. I moved into the next lane. Somebody behind me, like two cars behind me, was mad that the car in between us was going slowly and didn't do the necessary precautions. Just went, Ch -ch -ch and then tried to pass by both of us. So it was the rare, like, everybody sucks here cutoff, right? Like, don't, that's one of the worst things in, in the driving is when you want to change lanes. But people behind you are like, I want to change lanes first. So you got to sit there and be like, okay, has everybody behind me changed lanes? Now I can finally go. But anyway, after I, I realized that I cut the guy off, he gave me a little honk, which I felt like I deserved. And then I waved like this, to, which is the, the universal sign for my bad. And then like un 10 seconds later, I went like this again, just to make sure they saw it. I, you know, people make mistakes when they drive. As long as you acknowledge that you, uh, that you messed up, I don't think anyone's gonna keep honking at you unless they, like, you know, are estranged from their children. It's also the universal sign for mocking the person who honked. No, that's... I'm not gonna do it in the camera, but that's the jerk-off motion. I mean, when someone makes a mistake in traffic, and then I'm, like mad at them and then they do this i'm like okay don't worry everybody makes mistakes what do you expect our brains are made out of meat of course we're gonna make mistakes 
If they don't acknowledge me while I'm raging at them from inside of my car, I get I get a little bit more upset because I'm like, man, that's a person who probably does that mistake like every damn day. They don't even acknowledge that they're doing anything wrong. Can can somebody oh hold on, we got a we got a macros um better Twitch TV emo suggestion. Tisk it's a finger wag. You know what? I would add that. That's added. Should be available in um ten minutes or less. That reminds me of uh the day we bought old old uh Faithful, the Ford Focus, where I must uh, remind you that Ford management knew about the faulty transmission issues for three years, but kept selling the car. And then also whenever customers complained about the transmission issues, the standard operating procedure for Ford was have them come in, take a half day off work every time, tell them, hey, we looked at your car and uh, nothing's wrong, or alternatively, fucking flash the firmware or something and be like, yeah, we fixed it. Even though they knew that the shit was faulty uh, on like a manufacturing level. Then later, they got into a class action lawsuit. And admittedly, if you if you took your car to the Ford dealership like seven times, Ford had to buy you a new car. But most reasonable people were like, they took it in two times and then said, these people in this company are fucking useless and they didn't waste their time anymore and just dealt with it. But anyway, the day we bought Old Faithful, we were driving in downtown Vancouver. Kate tried to change lanes. A bald man in a BMW convertible sped up so that she couldn't change lanes. I swear, with God is my witness, he looked over to us and then did this. It's the only time I've ever seen that level of assholery in traffic. Like, just overt dickhead move. And honestly, like, it wasn't even, like, a good BMW. Not to be rude. But he was not driving, you know, like a vintage M3 or something like that. It was just, like, it's just a car. Like, if you cut me off in a Bugatti Veyron, I would be like, Whoa, another Bugatti Veyron? You don't see too many of those. I would give him the Jeep Wave. I'd give him one of these. No, it was not Howie Mandel. He was bald, but in denial. Is that one of those situations where you wish the man physical harm? Not really. Um, Cause I, I mean, this is not meant to just be an own, but I feel like if you're at that point in your life, like where you're doing that shit in traffic, like your life is just fucked up. Like you, you're just like a bad person. You're, if you act like that towards strangers, I don't even want to know how you act like towards like the people in your life that you're more comfortable with. It's not, I don't have pity for them. I just want them to go away. They don't have to suffer any, you know, cosmic punishment or anything, but... I have... So Dick Hammer replied to my stop sign tweet and said, I've been liking this rebellious phase you're in lately. It's true. I do... I don't know if it's because of the near-death experience or whatever, or maybe the colonoscopy, or maybe Ketchikan Alaska rubbed off on me a little bit, but I do feel like I'm a little bit more rebellious now. I've, I've always been like a, hey, I'm like following the rules sort of guy, but then now I'm kind of like... Like, previously, if the rule was stupid, I would just follow it and then complain about it, like, you know, behind closed doors. Now, you know, if I have to do something that's dumb... Did you see the needle get threaded there? I'm like, oh yeah, I'll do that. And then I just don't do it. Because I'm like, you should know that your request was absurd in the first place. I don't say I'm not going to do that, because then they would, like, get mad. Instead, I just go... You know, I just do whatever I was going to do in the first place. <laughs> and then <laughs> if they notice that I didn't do things the way that they requested me, then I'll be like, oh, yeah, sorry, my bad. But I'm like, you know, I still and I, I stand by this. My prime directive when I'm outside is just like to not needlessly inconvenience other people. I'm stunned by how many people just when they're outside are just like, I'm going to do whatever I want in the most convenient way possible for me. And if it gets in anybody's way, then then that's their problem. Cause I'm like, I'm so important and special. You know, I was I was in line at a bakery. Uh, this was on Sunday again, I think. All I was getting was a, a croissant and a loaf of bread. Spied two different lines, okay? One line, tourists, no problem. Not suggesting that there's anything wrong with that. Other line, 60 year old woman with her credit card already in her hand what line do you pick if you want to get out of the bakery as soon as possible you go to the line with the woman who has her credit card in her hand she's got it all figured out right that's where you're wrong 
gets handed the credit card machine, tries to tap. tap she's like, the tap's not working. They're like, oh, yeah, you have a prompt first. The prompt is like, do you accept the cost of this, like, coffee that you got? She looks at it for like 30 seconds and then is like, yes. Then she taps her card. Her card doesn't work. She's like, oh, my card doesn't work. And they said, there's another uh, prompt for tip. You can just put, you can push no on it. She looks at it for another 30 seconds. Hits a button. I don't know which one she hit. Taps her card. Finally, it works. And I'm like, dude, this is like, I've been waiting two and a half minutes now to just pay like six bucks for this breakfast. I'm really hungry. I can't eat it because I haven't paid for it yet. You should lose, like, you're a bit, you should lose outdoors privileges for three months. Just, <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe that's too much. Until you demonstrate the ability that, to handle the transaction, you have to go to a different line. <laughs> I'm not, I love, so this is like how I thought when I was like 22. And then I spent like, Eight years or ten years, whatever, getting more empathetic, and now I'm regressing again because I have a lot less time than I did over the past few years. And when I was 22, I was like, every time I go to the airport, I'm like, there should be one line that's like people who don't cause problems, and one line for people that ask a lot of fucking questions. People were like, minus two, horrible take. I said, you know what? Everybody's going through their own shit. It's time to become empathetic. Over the last few years, I realized it's gotten me nowhere. Selfish idiots uh, simply use that as an excuse to take advantage of you. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Now there's three lines at the airport. One line just for me, one line for other people that don't cause problems, and one line for people that ask too many fucking questions. Obviously, I don't actually believe this. Well, I do, but I don't believe it's a better system. <laughs> but it would be sick for me. And I stand by... The plastic straw take. It's bad for the environment, but what people never consider is maybe it's worth it. <laughs> it's like, and people are like, that sociopath take. You make that decision every day. You drive your car to work. Oh, I can't walk. It's five miles. You could walk. You just decided that driving a car that produces like, you know, CO2 and emissions via internal combustion was worth it that day. Because I, I wanted to sleep for an extra 20 minutes because I'm tired, you know? I, we make that decision every day. Why can't we make that decision with our straws, man? Full of minus twos today? I disagree. Because I said so. But to be honest, I've actually, the older I've gotten, the less shit I've been carrying. And I kind of love it. Like now sometimes, I don't even bring my wallet outside because I have... Uh, I have Samsung Pay and Google Google Pay on my phone. So I'm like, what do I need a wallet for? Leave it behind at a restaurant and then like, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not even worried about like my credit card being stolen. It just sounds like a pain in the ass to like have to, you know, get new ID, okay? When you get carded at the liquor store. That only happens in Ketchikan, Alaska, okay? Because they, they, they live a little harder up there. In Vancouver, you know, it might surprise you, but on a regular basis, I'm not the youngest looking person. In Ketchikan, Alaska, I was like, you ever have them? This is so rude. <laughs> you ever go to like um, a different town and all of a sudden you're like, holy cow, I'm hot? Don't lie to me and don't lie to yourself. It happens. In Vancouver, I'm nothing special, okay? Sometimes we go visit our in-laws in like northwestern Washington. Maybe we go to the Mount Vernon Tulip Festival or something like that. And I'm like, damn, dude, I'm a hottie. I had no idea. I go back to Vancouver. I'm like, I'm just a guy. I go to the Bellis Fair Mall in Bellingham, uh, Washington against my will under duress. And I'm like, holy cow. I didn't, I can't believe it. I didn't realize I was such a specimen. <laughs> But it's kind of true, though. <laughs> I'm like, shit on Bellingham take. Yep, it's true. No, I don't think I'm a Vancouver 8. And I don't even think that means that, like, I think I'm ugly or have unhealthy self-esteem. Got a lot of, like, you know, fit, attractive people in Vancouver. It honestly, like, people here on average, I would say, are, like, so fit and active that it actually sort of, like, makes you mad. Because you're like, how are you going for a jog, like, Wednesday at noon? Like, don't you have a job? Like, who's who's keeping the city running? 
If you walk outside on a June day in Vancouver, you would be like, the, it must be a holiday. There's so many like 20 to 50 year olds that are just chilling. I'm not mad that they're chilling. I'm mad that they're like in better shape than I am. Like if, if, I, if they were in worse shape than me, I would be like, look, they're having a nice day. But when they're in better shape than me, I'm like, get a job. I mean, how, how Vancouver specific do you want, or like, you know, greater Vancouver uh, area specific do you want to get? I haven't been to Surrey all that often, um, but I do know that Surrey is, I mean, it's going to pass Vancouver in population or something if it hasn't already. I also know that it's coming up, you know, its reputation is not as bad as it used to be. But still, I mean, like, so our in-laws came up to Vancouver. Uh, and we went to Central City Fun World, which is a cool, like, arcade where everybody had a fun time. Uh, then they said, we want to get Korean food. So they found the restaurant. As we were driving out to the restaurant in Surrey, I was like, we're in Wally. I don't know a whole lot about um, Surrey, but I do know that Wally is kind of like, you know, Surrey's version of, like, the Tenderloin, I think, in San Francisco, where it's just like... I'm not saying you can't go there, but like you want to be at least a little bit aware. Um, and then we went to the Korean restaurant. Everything was fine while we were eating. No joke. Um, we my in-laws went back to their car and found out that uh, their shoes were stolen out of the like they had spare shoes in the trunk, and uh, and that was it. They like left the they left their wallet, they left a laptop. They didn't smash a window or anything. So I don't know, maybe the trunk was just like left unlocked. They just stole the shoes. Could have been worse. They they it could have stolen their wallet would had which had their passports in it. They would have had a, a hard time getting back across the border. It was a Sunday, you know, they're going back to work the next day. That would have been a nightmare. For a dollar name someone on the Mariners. Okay. Felix Hernandez. He's dead? I thought maybe he retired. He was murdered? Okay, I cannot name a player. I'm guessing Ichiro doesn't play for the Mariners or any team in the MLB anymore. <laughs> he's not dead. He's a coach. Okay. All right. Burp, 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 burp. By the way, can I tell you, I finished Tenet last night. Controversial take on Tenet. Loved it. Actually, and I loved it in spite of its warts, I think. I would say that the, um, the action scenes in Tenet even though it's like color coded to try to make it a little bit more watchable i found them incomprehensible whenever they were doing any sort of like mission i was like i don't know what the fuck is happening i i don't understand how he's fighting in reverse like when he's fighting a dude who's going backwards in time but the dude who's going backwards in time isn't really fighting he's just kind of like moving his arms the way he would normally move his but it's because he already moved his arms that his other guy is fighting that he's having to fight so like the ink is already dry anyway the thing is i thought that um it was i thought that the action in the movie was incomprehensible but every time it was happening i was like this shit is cool <laughs> Whenever they explained something, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. And then I really, I, especially the end of the movie, at the end of the movie, it gets a little anime. No spoilers. But, um, you know, one of the characters basically uh, sums up the entire movie in the most anime protagonist uh, way possible by speaking exclusively in, like, um, riddles. And then saying, like, I'll see you again someday in the past, or maybe I won't, or maybe it's already happened. Take care of yourself. And I was like, that's fucking sick, dude. I, I honestly, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed by, by how much I enjoyed Tenet. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was fantastic.
It's an insane big studio movie. I know, like, this is two years after it came out, so I'm, in, like, very late to the party. It actually, it, it sort of plays like Chris Nolan watched Primer and was like, hey, what if I made a movie that also made no fucking sense, but, like, it's gonna cost $300 million? <laughs> I thought it was cool. Also, I love Kenneth Branagh, man. I didn't even know he was in the movie. When Kenneth Branagh showed up, I was like, oh, shit. Leonardo DiCaprio. That's Kenneth Branagh. I love that guy. I do think that it makes no sense, though. And I am kind of into that. Like, maybe Christopher Nolan, if I asked him the questions that I had about, like, hey, how does this thing work? Because it looks fucking stupid. He would have, like, an answer. But I'm like, no, I kind of like that you were just like, you know what? It doesn't make any sense, and that's okay, because it's cool enough. Yeah, like, inverted lungs can't breathe real air. I know what you did there, Christopher Nolan. You screened the fucking movie, and the audience was like, I don't know who's who. I don't know who's going forward in time. I don't know who's going backwards in time. The shit doesn't make any sense. And then Chris Nolan was like, uh, we'll make them wear an oxygen mask so they know they're going backwards in time. And then you just have a scientist be like, you know, oh, inverted lungs can't breathe normal air. I don't know if they fixed the audio mixing in, on Netflix or if I just, because I watch everything with subtitles on, I didn't notice. But I, I didn't find the sound mixing that bad. But it was a very common complaint. And, and I believe the complaint 100% because Chris Nolan's audio is always, like, bad. <laughs> I still, like, The Dark Knight Rises is, is not the best Batman movie. Um, but it's still, it's just, I'm, it's so funny that they let Tom Hardy do the voice, man. Like, it's just, like, they, I'm not saying they should have just had him talk like a normal guy, but the fact that he talks like that, and then nobody, at, at no point does anybody go, hey, Bane, like, what's wrong with your, uh, what's wrong with your voice? What voice? You know, his, his weird, like, soda can British accent. Where he's always up speaking at the end of his sentences. You know why I'm here? Cactus Jack sent me! You need the cup for it. I don't think I have a cup. I just have a water bottle. You know why I'm here? I'll have a junior bacon cheeseburger. Something, you know, is... Like, legitimately, when the trailer came out for The Dark Knight Rises, I could not understand what he was saying. It just sounded like noise to me. But I, they cleaned it up a little bit in the in the theater release, I guess, but I saw it in theaters. It's a fine movie. It's 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 not bad. I mean, it's probably my my second favorite of the Chris Nolan Batmans. I think Batman Begins is highly overrated. There must have been a, a YouTube essay that was like why Batman Begins is actually the best Batman movie. I, Batman Begins, I, I don't care if you minus two the shit out of me for this. Ra's al Ghul is an ass villain. <laughs> I don't even know what he does. Like, what's his thing? He's old and he has like a lot of contacts. He has, a, he has, he has power in the shadows or something. He's just a guy. He's immortal? Not in the movie. I mean, The Dark Knight Rises has, has problems. And don't try to explain it to me, okay? Just, uh, with Chris Nolan movies, you gotta just, sometimes he's like, this shit would be cool. Bane's plan coming to fruition and putting all of Gotham City on a, on a time crunch. Batman somehow escaping from uh, a bottomless pit in Turkey with a broken back. Getting in a private jet, flying back to Gotham City in the nick of time, but also having time to leave, like, the bat signal on the bridge to light it on fire so that it sends a signal to Gotham that Batman's back. Like, it's just... Sometimes he just does stuff in his movies that's like, this would be sick. And I respect... Like, that's what I like about Tenet. As far as I'm concerned, Tenet does not make sense. And I, I think that that's very... It allows them to do some very cool stuff. Like, the backwards fighting... I, I don't understand. How can you backwards, like, martial arts fight somebody? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense! But, I, but I'm but i into it. When, whenever they're backwards fighting, I'm like, oh, shit. And then they're like, I don't understand how this works. And then a scientist is like, the laws of physics are inverted when you're inverted. So fire is cold. And I'm like, oh, shit. What the hell? It's not backwards for you? Yeah, but look at the way he's fighting when he's inverted. That shit looks backwards. He's just going like this over and over. When he's fighting forwards, he's throwing punches and, and 
grapples and stuff. When he's fighting backwards, he's just going like this over and over. That is backwards, though? <laughs> what, did you do? what are you talking about? What, I don't know what you're talking about. From your perspective, Robert Pattinson is also sick in Tenet. He's amazing in that movie. I'm starting to think that guy might just be like a good actor. I don't know. Would love your thoughts on this. Did you watch Primer? I, I have seen Primer like four times. I feel like I, I actually have finally come to the point where I kind of understand Primer. I really like it. It took a long time for me to, to get what's happening. Because like two dudes invent time travel and then use it to like, um, I don't know, spy on their friend a little bit and insider trade. What they should have done is get into a bunch of backwards fights and wear a gas mask. That would have been cool. No, I think Primer is really good. I mean, everybody knows it, though. It's like going on r slash movies and going, I watched this movie nobody's ever heard of. Why does nobody talk about this movie, The Nice Guys? Most underrated movie? What, what would you post? I don't know. I, I think you know my insane take. You'd have to sort by controversial to see it. I still feel like Crank and Crank 2 are actually highly underrated, and the world was not ready to, t to not take this movie seriously. I think they took the movie too seriously, critics and audiences, and said, what the hell? This is stupid. Jason Statham has to keep his heart rate up. I think now, with uh, Jason Statham has to electrocute his balls to, to not die. I think that they, in a world where, like, those, you know, I feel like, more avant-garde movies are finding an audience now, and, and especially movies that are a little bit unrealistic, over the top with the action and stuff like that. People are kind of more into them now. I feel like it's got a, it, it would have a better chance for like it to be revised as a bit of a cult classic now. No, I would not say the Age of Ultron. If I was going to pick a Marvel movie, most, most underrated Marvel movie, I don't know. I don't have an answer. I honestly feel like lately it might be Doctor Strange 2. I think... But I don't think there's any revisionist history coming for Doctor Strange 2. I think it just is what it is. But yeah, I don't know. I, I think the Crank movies are, are actually slept on. I don't think they're like ironically good. Or so bad it's good. I think those movies are good good. I would rather watch those movies ten times each than ever see a, a sequel to The Transporter. Or Christmas with the Cranks. Jason Statham as, as Chev Chelios. Mr. Chelios, I regret to inform you I've placed a chip in your brain. If you don't watch Christmas with the Cranks once every three hours in its entirety, your brain will explode. Good luck. Jason Statham, good trying to watch Christmas with the Cranks, but he's at his data cap for the month, so he's got to find a video store, but there's no video stores left in London. Let me use your phone. That's not really what he sounds like. Oi! <laughs> Let me use your phone. Not really a good Jason Statham impression. You nailed it. I think that's just the oi, honestly. I need to use your phone. Let me use your... F Let me use your phone. <laughs> oh, I, I see why you guys don't like the impression. Oi, I need your mobile. I, I need your mobile telly. I need your pocket ring. Now you sound like Carl Urban from The Boys. Huey. That's, <laughs> I've only seen season one, like, three years ago. Another thing, I've become, like, a bad uh, Discord user. Because so if... <laughs> this is not a joke. Um, sometimes people will be talking to me, and I'll be like, I'm kind of done with this conversation. And I'll just link, like, I'll post an image in the chat of the David Blaine impersonator from the classic YouTube video. It works literally 100% of the time. If someone is talking about some stuff and you're like, I'm kind of done with this conversation, if you post that image of the David Blaine looking at the camera, they will reply, Cheez-Its? Cheez-Its? And then you're segueing onto a different conversation immediately. I'm known for my reality show. That's Kim Kardashian. Yeah, that's, that's where I know her from. I wrote, uh, that's Mrs. That's Mrs. Fields? Shouldn't she be like a hundred years old? Are you telling me Mrs. Fields, this company was started in like the 80s or something? 
You tell me Miss Field is a baddie? <laughs> Sheesh. I had no idea. I thought she was like an old lady. I thought she was like a grandma. Instead, she's a grandma, kind of like Catherine Keener was a grandma in The 40-Year-Old Virgin. Name a woman. This is Jennifer Salem from the Salem Witch... No, this is Wednesday Adams. <laughs> Dude, this does look like Tim Robinson. I am best known... Okay, Suzanne Collins. You're a Hunger Games author. Dude, that's, that's like a soul speed read. She didn't write Twilight, but she wrote The Hunger Games. Eh? Oh, dude. Nation's food by images? Let's go. British food by image. Dude, come on. We got fish and chips. We got trifle. That's, that's not trifle. Trifle's elsewhere. Eh? What the hell is this? Cottage cheese. I have no idea. Pie. Mince meat pie. Shepherd's pie. Farmer's pie. What is a Plothman's lunch? Okay, I, I actually have no idea what the, what the second image is. Is it, is it a ricotta salad? <laughs> okay. The other, it's another form of pie right after that, and that's okay. I see a raspberry cake. I see toad in the hole. I see a, is that a croque monsieur? My favorite British food. I see a soup. I'm going to call that vegetable soup. I see a pie. Kidney pie. Steak and kidney pie. I see a pie. Was that on there? <laughs> I gotta start saying pudding, man. I forgot pudding. Bread pudding. You know, in, in England, they call dessert pudding. They're like, what are we having for pudding tonight? Ice cream. Doesn't make any damn sense. Sorry. Anyway, I'm going back. I don't know what kind of pie that is. That's not a pie. That's not a pie. It's a, it's a toasty. It's a, I know, it's a, it's a beef patty. I know what you, you call them something... Okay, I see Stilton. I see pesto. I see chimichurri. I have no idea what it even is. Okay, I see apple crisp, apple crumble. I see cinnamon roll. I mean, this is not Sweden, so like, don't make me laugh. I have no idea. I see wine gums. <laughs> I don't even know what any of this stuff is, man. Uh, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just missing some stuff. But I'm like, how many forms of English cuisine are just something with mashed potatoes on top of it? Or is this even mashed potatoes? That looks more like a dessert. I have no idea. I. I can't tell, like, from the soup what's in the soup. How am I supposed to know? It looks like a damn vichyssoise to me. I also, I, I, I couldn't tell you what the Uncle Ben's rice with a, with a hard-boiled egg in it is. I have no idea. What the fuck is this? I'm, I promise, okay, hold on. Let's put it forth a good faith effort. I see scallop potatoes. Okay. I see scallop potatoes. Okay, I see roast. I see a traditional Sunday roast. Okay, that's delicious. There's nothing wrong with that. What on earth is this? <laughs> is this? This looks like something from the Resident Evil 7 dinner scene. What is this? That is not Beef Wellington. It might be like a ham uh, beaver brook. I have no idea. That is not Beef Wellington, okay? That's called pork pie. All right, but before we give up, because I don't know any of the other ones, let's go through it, okay? What's number two here? What is this Satsiki Sunday? It's called Eaten Mess. I'll say, I know they're eating the mess. What the hell is the mess called? I'm Whatever, I'm giving up. 
Gooseberry fool. I can't. I can't read these. I'm sorry. The, the first one they give me is called Gooseberry Fool. What <laughs> can I can't. Oh, treacle tart. I thought treacle was poison, man. Isn't treacle like it's like arsenic or something? Or is tar? It's molasses. Oh, okay. Summer pudding, sure, whatever. Not a pudding, but, you know, we got bigger problems. Welsh rarebit. Kaka leaky soup. Cornish pasty. I, pasty was actually what I was looking for. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I was reading ahead to some of the other ones. I never snort when I laugh. That's how you know you got me good. Mint sauce, sure. I'll give you that one. Chelsea buns. <laughs> Queen, of, Queen of puddings. And then what the hell? What the hell is Cullen skink, man? <laughs> it's so good. What are you talking about? Like, is that really what you call it? Isn't it just, it looks like a seafood soup. Why is it called Cullen Skink? I feel like most other cultures name their food after like some, you know, semblance of the ingredients that are in it. I mean, when we were, uh, I don't know, maybe not. But when I saw refried beans in the Mexican quiz, I was like, hey, those are refritos frijoles. Although I did it backwards. Kedgeri. Pork pie. That's one where the name makes a lot of sense, but the dish itself looks fucking disgusting. I'm sorry. I, I'm basically British. I'm Canadian. I think I'm allowed to judge it just on sight. It's a breaded ham. It's so good. Is, this, is the image misleading? Like, is it actually this tall? Or is it like this tall? Because I think if it was small... Like, if you could pop one of these in your mouth in one bite, maybe that makes sense. But this looks like a slice of it is like a foot tall. Simmel cake. Sorry. <clears throat> Simnel cake. Lancashire hot pot. Sounds like something uh, a gang would do to you to kill you. And cream tea. I'm actually like 0% mad that I got maybe mint sauce and the the... The pasty I could have gotten, but come on, gooseberry fool, cauliflower cheese, queen of puddings, Cullen skink. What's the average? 41%. <laughs> you couldn't get cockaliki soup? Honest, I mean, we crushed it. 79 versus 43. Did they cherry pick on the British quiz? Did they take like weird, rare? British foods, or did they take normal foods? Because they took, like, n normal French foods. No, it was a good representation. You guys eat Cullen Skink, like, once every three months or more over there? England, I just gotta say, you're taking, like, a huge L. Are you seeing... <laughs> Are you seeing what we're dealing with here versus the British... Like, both the French one and the Italian one were just like, boom, 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 boom. I know this, boom, boom, boom. We were stun-locked on the England one. Super science bunker. Can you get to section 15 of the chemistry bunker? I don't even know what the fuck that means. But it's got a picture of Walter White and Jesse Pinkman. So sure, let's try to get to sector 15 of the chemistry bunker. Whatever the hell that means. What is the most common hydrogen isotope? It's not tritium because that's what Dr. Octopus goes insane looking for in Spider-Man 2. I feel like it's probably, I don't know. Maybe, I guess I've heard of deuterium, so I'm going to say it's deuterium. Ah, son of a bitch. <laughs> Hold on, we can we'll run it back, run it back. Replay this quiz, please. Which compound is incorrectly matched to the functional group that it contains? C3... CH3OH, that's a hydroxyl group. Oh, what the fuck? CH3COOH, hydroxyl C? 
CZL3ZOOH, carboxylic acid. Or, what the hell is R2? R2? That's not a real thing. What element is R? Potassium? I say D. All right, I give up. It's radon? Oh, R is just a stand-in for any organic... This person doesn't even... They're not consistent with their wording. That's a bit of a difficulty spike. I felt like I was on... I was on schooled. Jesse. Jesse, help me. Jesse, help me. I'm on schooled. Question four was, what even number comes after one? Question five was, what's 1.6% of 35,317? And you're not allowed to use a calculator. Okay, how about Super Science Bunker 2? Can you answer the biology questions correctly to reach the end of the bunker? Jesse, is it the meat or the salad one? So good. Okay, biology quiz. Easy 100%. Which of these is a newborn horse? That's a foal. Insulin is produced in the pancreas. The largest species of penguin. Bro, do you see why getting a degree in biology is so hard? I gotta know everything about every animal. I gotta know human beings' uh, organs. I gotta know which penguin's the biggest. I gotta know the name of like a baby kangaroo. Like it's madness. It's an emperor penguin. What part of the eye controls the aperture of the pupil? That's the iris. What part of a plant transports sucrose and other nutrients? That's the xylem. The phloem transports water. Ah, shit. Okay, I always get those confused. Okay, we're going again. <laughs> it's a foal. It's a pancreas. It's an emperor. It's the iris. It's the phloem. The deltoid is located on your shoulder. Oncologists treat cancer. What blood type can be donated to people with any other blood type? O negative. Which biologist discovered penicillin? Fleming. The Belgian blue is... A, this is why it's impossible to get 100% on a biology exam. The Belgian blue is a breed of what animal? This shit did not come up in microevolution class. I don't know. I'm going to be honest. It sounds like a sheep. Eat shit, I guess. Komodo dragons are indigenous to which country? This shit is stupid. This is why... This is not a quiz about biology. This is like bad Jeopardy. I don't know. Indonesia. What nucleo base appears in DNA but not RNA? Okay, this is um, biology, but I got to think for a second. DNA's got the ACGT. RNA does not have A. It has U instead. It's an adenine. All right, I'm giving up. I'm giving my degree away. It's not like you need to know that shit anyway. Not to be, like you, you have a job interview. Hey, uh, w which one doesn't appear in RNA? Oh, that's thymine. Okay, great. You got the job. Now fucking clean the agar plates and put them on my desk. The only place you need that is to get to the bottom of the bunker. Which cosmologist discovered the expansion of the universe? This is not a physics question. This is a question about celebrities. I bet it was Kepler. Ah, shit. <laughs> Run me back. Wait, did Hubble make the telescope or is the telescope named after him? With God as my witness, I thought that he made the telescope and named it after himself. That's why I was like, they definitely discovered the expansion of the universe before the telescope was made. <laughs> he built it in his backyard. Oh, man. What is the gauge boson of the strong nuclear force? Hmm. I'm going to say Z. All right. <laughs> I'm only familiar with the Higgs boson. I'm not familiar with the gauge boson. They must have discovered that after my time at CERN. Which civilization used the system of knotted ropes as a form of communication? Why didn't they just write it down? Knotted ropes? Hey, thank you, an anonymous gifter, by the way, for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. I have no idea. I'm just gonna I'm gonna steal one from chat. What do you think it is? I'm honestly I'm seeing a lot of C. I'm going C. What empire did Mansa Musa rule? Come on, this Mali. Which food item did not exist in Europe prior to 1492? It's gotta be the potato, man. 
Which of these countries made a territorial claim in Antarctica during the 20th century? Canada? No, never mind. Really, honestly, it sounded like us. <laughs> I'm still feeling pretty good about that. 13 with only one cheating option. How about ancient history? The Colossus of Rhodes was located on which Greek island? I'm going to say Rhodes. Ancient Rome spoke Latin. How many wonders of the world are there? Seven. Alexander the Great led the Macedonian Empire. King Leonidas and his army faced the army of the Persian King Xerxes at Thermopylae. Julius Caesar was murdered in March. The Great Pyramid of Giza is also known as Menkaure. <laughs> It was Kofu? No way, man. Kofu is the, he's the semi-bad guy from Moon Knight. Marvel wouldn't just take a name like that. No shot. European geography. Which country is not in Europe? I'm going to go with Vietnam on that one. The capital of Italy, Rome. Big Ben, that's in London. Smallest European country, Vatican City. Which of these mountains are in Europe? Mont Blanc. Which country is not considered part of Scandinavia? Probably got to go Belgium on that one. The River Danube does not run through Paris. Which of the following countries is an EU member state? Norway. What? It's tricky. Hold on. Start me over again. Let me get back to that one. Vietnam. Rome. London. Vatican. Mont Blanc. Belgium, Paris. It's tricky. I feel like Switzerland's not in the EU because they're snobs. Bulgaria makes the most sense. Or Albania, if it's not Norway. It's on continental Europe. You could, mm, I'd probably say Albania. Okay, I'm going to replay it. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to say Bulgaria. Vietnam, Rome, London. Vatican City, Mont Blanc, Belgium, Paris, Bulgaria. Okay, which of the following is a Spanish island? Majorca. What percentage of the population lives in Europe? Okay, North America, probably got about 400 million. That's like, I don't know, 5%. South America, say a little bit less. Let's, let's say 300 million. That takes another 4% off. So we got about 10% in the Americas. Asia has like 40% or more. 50%. Europe, not a lot. Okay, I'm, hold on. Africa, also high populations. I think a billion people live in Europe. No. 11%, 700 million people. I'm going to go 11. Whew! It was like 11 or 16, I felt. Seven was too low, but how many stars are on the European Union flag? I don't know. There were probably 12 original member countries. There you go. How many countries border Austria? A lot. More than two. Slovenia, Germany, Czechia, Slovakia. Italy, maybe? I can't remember. Croatia? I'm going to say, honestly, I think it's eight. What's the most widely spoken mother tongue in the EU? That's a really tough question. That, that question is fucked up. All of these are predominantly only spoken as the mother tongue in the country for which they're named. <clears throat> like, it, worldwide, it would be Spanish, no doubt. But in the EU, I don't know. Largest population, I think, is Germany. Is that enough? I'm going to say yes. Uh, let's go! <laughs> oh, it also has Austria and Switzerland and Belgium. Is Germany the mother tongue of, or is German the mother tongue of Belgium, though? 
it's not um Wallonian, I can't remember. Or French, or Dutch, or Vlandaren. Only for some. Okay. Which country has never changed its capital? Um, I feel like I'm going to say Portugal. I was wrong. I thought it was Portugal because it was like every other country had been beset by war throughout the medieval era and beyond. I assumed Italy had changed its capital from Rome at some point. It gets, it gets captured by like the Visigoths and then you're like, oh, guess what? We didn't even like it. Now the capital's in Naples. It must, so it was either Denmark or Austria. I mean, it's, I'm, I guess I'd say Denmark. I don't know, though. Uh, you know what? That's true. The Kingdom of Italy and the country of Italy might be, might be considered two different entities. I don't know if GeoGuessr Quizmaker went to that level, though. Anyway, European Geography Bunker 2. That was a good... Dude, I know more about geography than biology. That's kind of scary. Where would you find the Eiffel Tower? Anywhere, if you have Google Images. Capital of Denmark, Copenhagen. Smallest European country by area, Vatican City. Which of these countries is an island? Malta. Which of these countries borders the Mediterranean Sea? Cyprus. Which of these mountain ranges is not in Europe? The Pyrenees, the Carpathians, and the Alps are? Which of these countries does not use the euro? Honest question, how am I supposed to know? I'm going to go B. Here's my reasoning. France does. Cyprus and Slovakia are smaller than Czechia. So who are they to say we're using our own currency? <laughs> okay. What is the largest landlocked country in Europe? By area? Belarus. What is the longest river in Europe? I want to say it's the Danube, but I definitely feel like the Volga is also pretty long. Oh, maybe much longer. Okay, re that, not for a first try, not too bad. Eiffel Towers in France, Copenhagen, Vatican City, Malta, Cyprus, Atlas Mountains, Czechia, Belarus, Volga? Which of these countries is, has Italian as an official language? And say Albania? All right, I give up. <laughs> Albania, Monaco, Switzerland, or Greece? Switzerland? They do border. Why would you say Albania? Doesn't Italy border Albania? A little sliver? It, it borders Slovenia, which borders Albania. No, not at all. All right, whatever. Over the Adriatic? I don't know seas. So when you talk to me about seas, I don't respect them. Star Wars? Oh, dude. How about the classic rock bunker? Which of the following musicians was not a member of the Beatles? I would say Paul Butterfield. Freddie Mercury was part of Queen. These are albums by Pink Floyd. Sweet Home Alabama's by Leonard Skinner. The founding members of KISS were Paul Stanley, Peter Chris, Ace Frehley, and a one-and-a-half-year-old Billy Joe Armstrong, later famous for founding Green Day as well. I'm going to say Gene Simmons. Ziggy Stardust was David Bowie. Which of these songs was not recorded by Led Zeppelin? Sweet Emotion. See, this is the shit that pisses me off. The Rolling Stones are founded in what year? I'm going to say 62, but it could be 52. Dust in the Wind is by Kansas. Janis Joplin was the lead singer of Crazy Horse. Never mind. Take another little piece of our heart. So true. Food Bunker! 
What is the, I thought we'd have photos. The BLT stands for bacon, lettuce, and tomato. A dried plum is called a prune. The Italian word for ice cream is gelato. Meat from a deer is called venison. Almonds are used in marzipan. Japanese dish, thinly sliced meat or fish without rice. That's chicken sashimi. In Britain, an eggplant is called Swede. Aubergine? Aubergine? Aubergine, okay. I thought aubergine might only be French. What is Swede? Because they talk about it on Peppa Pig. Daddy Pig's like, I'll have cream of Swede. And then Peppa Pig goes, I want spaghetti. And then they go, Peppa, spaghetti's not on the menu. But guess what? The waiter brings her some spaghetti anyway. And then Daddy Pig goes, if it's not too much to ask, I'd like to have some spaghetti too. And then they all go, spaghetti for everyone. Daddy Pig loves spaghetti. Everybody loves spaghetti. <sniffs> and they fall on the ground laughing. Anyway, sorry. Which plant is tequila made from? Agave. Which of these is not one of the eight essential juices found in the original V8? Parsley? That's bullshit. I want to speak to the V8 company. You're, you're not putting parsley juice in the V8. What, how much juice are you getting out of a parsley? Parsley juice? You should do Canadian food slideshow. You know what? This is not your local radio station, but I am taking requests. Canadian food slideshow. Can you name the foods commonly eaten in Canada in the slideshow? I bet I get a couple wrong. We're a big country. This is maple syrup. Maple Meple? Maple syrup. This is poutine. This is known as a butter tart. Pretty tasty, but I OD'd on them as a child. This is pea meal bacon. Delicious, by the way. That's tortier. French Canadian meat pie. It's mac and cheese. Oh, sorry. It's Canadian quiz. That's craft dinner. <laughs> That's a Nanaimo bar. Come on. So that's a beer? That's a, okay, it's a Molson Canadian. That's a smoked meat sandwich. Is that an eat more chocolate bar? <laughs> what is this? Are you venison? What is this? What is this? Is this pemmican? Okay, it's pemmican. These, these are ketchup chips, come on. Ketchup chips. That is called a beaver tail. That, those are Montreal bagels. Okay. Montreal style bagels. That's shepherd's pie. You can see why I'm confused by British cuisine. That's Canada dry ginger ale. Come on. This is Sunday roast. I'm going to be honest. I don't know what this is. I do question how many um, <laughs> baby carrots you need for one dish. This is crazy. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not Canadian, but I'm like, holy cow, man. This is, this is definitely something we inherited from our colonial overlords. Those are Timbits, or also known as Tim Biebs now. That's Donair. That's Crown Royal. That's a coffee crisp chocolate bar. It's a great chocolate bar. I don't know what the other one is. I honestly, I have never heard of this thing before in my life. Isn't that the name of Robert De Niro's cat from Meet the Fockers? With God as my witness, I've never heard of this. It's a Newfoundland thing. I don't know. I feel, I, I feel like it looks kind of tasty. A lot of people are saying it looks a little gross, but I don't know. I have a very European, well, like Irish palate, I think. 
You just serve me like a boiled potato. I'm pretty happy. Maybe not like a boiled russet, but a boiled red potato, some cabbage on the side. I'm pretty pleased with that. Okay, take me back, because there is also an American local food slideshow. Can you name the American and Canadian local and regional delicacies? Okay, I was going to do it. It's 107 questions long. <laughs> we could take a look for a second, but we're not doing the whole thing. 107? So I'll level with you. First one, I don't know what you are. These are Boston baked beans. Can I have a little help on this one? I is bread. French fries. <laughs> this is just food. It's just food. This is 12 different foods. Is it the purple steak that I'm supposed to be looking at here? <laughs> what is this? That's um, a corned beef sandwich. That's beef on weck from Buffalo. I love a caraway seed. Those are beignets. Okay, it's like in alphabetical order. That's crab. That's crab. That's crab. Crab boil. It's a, it's a crab. Uh, it's Old Bay seasoning. It's known as blue crab. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. What the hell? That's andouille sausage. Okay, I pass. Those are tacos. <laughs> Those are breakfast tacos. Oh! It's chili. I have no clue. Skyline chili? No, it doesn't have spaghetti in it. That's called Brunswick stew. Okay, buffalo wings. That's a gimme and a tasty. I'm just, we're going fast. That's a gumbo. Nope. Okay, next. Brisket. Burnt ends. Yeah, I know what that is. It's just salmon. It's literally, is blackened salmon. Blackened fish. What is this? It's salmon. It's salmon. It's fish. This is just salmon. That's an Italian beef. This one goes out to the, my, it's a Philly cheesesteak, isn't it? It goes out to my, the bear viewers. That's a Chicago hot dog. Duck Larange. This looks like fucking disgusting. This looks like, a, it, honestly, it looks like a cup full of bloody diarrhea. It looks horrible. I don't know what this is. That's a Chipino. <laughs> it looks a little disgusting, too. This looks fucking gross. <laughs> this looks... Why do all of these... Could you just try to make it look a little... I gotta, I gotta get out of here, man. This is too much. That's a spam sandwich. It looks... That looks tasty. That's a crab cake. I don't know what this is. That looks... Like a damn nightmare. That looks pretty tasty. That's a deep dish pizza. Those deep fried cheese curds. I have no idea what this is. That's a Donair. <laughs> they finally, they got a Canadian one in there. It's chicken salad. That's Skyline Chili. Fish and chips. That's a uh, walking taco. Hey, that's fry bread. That's marzipan. I don't know what this is. I'm out of here. Let me give this up. Fudge. Oh, yeah. I know that one. <laughs> I know. From Mackinac Island, Michigan. Funeral potatoes. I know a garbage plate, and I would have known it when I saw it. 
Ginger beef from Calgary, Alberta. What the hell is Goetta? This actually looks like what ends up at the bottom of your rice cooker. Gumbo. Delicious, of course. Half smoke. I gotta be honest, of all the... Of all the foods that look like a turd in a bun, this one looks the best so far. I'm sure there's more to come. In the, in the turd in a bun category, this is best in show right now. Hopia from Hawaii. I'm going to stop you right there. That's a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. And honestly, like, depending on how much you paid for it, this might be great value because those are... They're pretty expensive. Hoppin' John, of course. Horse, what, horseshoe sandwich from Springfield, Illinois. Would anyone from the area like to explain themselves? I do see some bread underneath. But like, what is it? And what's on the fries? Hot brown. We've been through the hot brown discussion before. I have no interest in going back. Okay, hot chicken sandwich from Buffalo, New York. Excuse me, Nashville. Take that L. Hot dish, Minnesota. You're on notice. Hot tamales served with eight saltine crackers for some reason. What the fuck is this? Is this a damn baked potato with peanuts shoved into it? What is this? These are actually good? What's in it? It's ice cream? Okay, Italian beef. Bear viewers stay winning. Jambalaya. Gibberito. I mean, that looks tasty enough as well. Don't even... Stop trying to make this a thing, okay? It's just because we've seen it twice in half an hour, that doesn't mean it's a thing. Johnny Marzetti. Yeah, when I see this dish, you know what I think? I don't think this is American lasagna. I think to myself, that looks like a Johnny Marzetti right there. Absolutely. Juicy Lucy, okay, Minnesota. Rare dub. Key lime pie. Korean tacos from Los Angeles. I mean, that's probably true. Honestly, they're not from Korea. There's a fusion. I mean, those look delicious. I can't deny that. Kuchin. Lobster roll. Can I say something? Lobster roll, possibly the most overrated sandwich of all time. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the photos out there. Maybe we can return to this quiz on another day. Lobster, delicious. Bread, delicious. Lobster roll, it's, not, it's, it's worse than the sum of its parts. Hold on, I'm 208. Let me see if my wife is ready to stream. She's already streaming. That's perfect. I also, at least like lobster roll on like a baguette or a roll, I can kind of get down with. What I don't like is when they take like a, like normal bread, like a squarish loaf, and then they take like a wide slice and they cut a little slit in the top and then they shove the lobster into the pocket. So it's like, outside of the bread and as soon as you bite in all the lobster just falls out onto the plate at least choose an appropriate uh bread type anyway sorry i'm gonna send you over to my wife's stream enjoy yourself i thought we had a good stream today i don't know what we're gonna do tomorrow maybe we'll do something i don't know we'll figure it out see you then later are you gonna play Gotham Knights? Oh well, oh well, oh well, oh whoop. Tell me more, tell me more. Are you in Arkham yet? Tell me more, tell me more. Is the Riddler a threat? Ah uh ha, -huh, ah uh ha, -huh, ah, uh, and oh, those Gotham Knights.